quick mention here regarding the Grammys. Everyone's getting their knickers in the twist as per usual. People throwing their dummies out and whatnot. And some of it is quite justified to be, especially some of the R&B categories. But the Grammys are what the Grammys are. They're never really a accurate representation of the music that the people are actually listening to or what's actually hot or what's actually good. It's mostly an industry, political type thing. And, you know, I don't think I'm going to get my knickers in a twist about any of these things. But I understand if you're an artist and you kind of slave away and plug away at your your record or your album um for the whole entire year and you know it's really heating up the streets it's really been kind of widely recognized as one of the best and then you get snubbed by the most prestigious awards ceremonies out there it can be very very hurtful but to start off with we got here new york times list of the nominations record of the year from the records here here on the screen i'd say the one that maybe stands out to me would maybe be Doja Cat, maybe Break My Soul. Man, let's say Break My Soul. Let's do Break My Soul. I think it will be the standout for me. Um, obviously, Steve Lacey's Bad Habit could be another one also, but I think Break My Soul would be a standout in terms of record of the year just because I absolutely hated it when it first dropped. Legitimately hated it. Um, it came out at the same time that... Um, what you call it honestly never mind came out drake's attempt at making tech house and i honestly thought that the reaction towards drake's honestly never mind was overblown it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be but then when break my soul came out everyone was literally wanking it off making it seem like it was the greatest house record of all time and i was like it's okay and then over time when you started hearing it out a lot but more importantly when you heard it in sequence with the album and how it was mixed it slaps that's an absolute tune so I definitely will go record of the year, Beyonce, Break My Soul. Album of the year from the options available has to be straight away Bad Bunny on Verano Sin Ti, which is, I think, translate to a summer without you, a summer with you, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And again, I'm not going to Google it because I don't want to guess, but I don't want to find out, but I think that's the case. So I'll have to give it to Bad Bunny on Verano Sin Ti. One thing I want to mention quickly, even though I'm a big fan of Kendrick Lamar, didn't this album aged quite badly like i haven't listened to it since it dropped i banged it out for the entire week that it was out but i haven't revisited it the way that i did damn and the way that i did the other flipping albums a pimper butterfly and whatnot this hasn't necessarily lived with me as long as i thought it would whereas on verano Sinti by bad bunny i play legitimately every day there's a song from this album that gets included into my playlist when I go to the gym and when I'm out and about. This legitimately gets played every single day. So it's interesting, no? Like, it didn't live that long at all. Obviously, flipping Adele will probably end up winning, right? That boring, boring ass music will probably end up winning. We know that. Or they'll give it to flipping ABBA as some sort of, like, you know, comeuppance for whatever else they've done to them in the industry back in the day. Or flipping Harry Styles gets it. But something will happen on those kind of lines. You know it's going to happen. Um, let's remove him. Da, 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 da. What's we gonna do here? Best new artist is absolutely crazy. Best new artist is absolutely crazy in terms of the nominations on there. Um, Anita Omar Palo, Domi and J Beck, Muni Long, Samara Joan Lato, Maniskin, Tubby Dingui, Molly Tato, and Wet Leg. I, I, I'd stretch, I'd just say Wet Leg. I banged out that album, I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't give it to Anita. Like, imagine Anita winning flipping Grammys of a new best artist. Are you insane? Uh, best pop performance, I don't care. Best pop duo performance, I don't care. Best vocal or pop album, I don't care. Best dance electronic recording, Break My Soul. You got Bonobo in here, Diplo and Miguel, David Guetta, <laughs> and BB Rex. Oh, mate, I don't know. I'd probably give it to Rufus the Soul on my knees. Standard. Let's go with that one. Best electronic dance album. I definitely give it to Rufus Surrender again. Um, and then let's continue on. Best rock performance. Oh my God. Of course, it would be Patient Number Nine, Rosie Osbourne, and Jeff Beck. What else is going to be? Oh no, actually, Turnstar. Let's go for no. Fuck that. We'll go Turnstar Holiday as best rock performance or Idols Crawl for sure. Those are the two I'd go for, but they're not going to win. You know that is going to happen. Best metal performance. Ghost gets fucking nominated every year, don't they? Let's go for... Let's do Megadeth. Let's give it to Megadeth. Let's give it to those old fogies. We'll be back by Megadeth. We'll get it for me. And then best rock album. The Black Keys, Elvis Costello, and then Post. Really? Okay. Um, let's do Spoon Lucifer on the sofa. 
Machine Gun Kelly being included in best rock album is legitimately hilarious, in my opinion. Um, best alternative music album, we got We Arcade Fire, Dragon, New War Mountain, I Believe in You by Big Thief, which is a really good album. That came out at the top of the year, I think, maybe February. So maybe that's something that people have forgotten about. But I really enjoyed that. We got Whatever, Fasora by Bjork, Wet Leg, Wet Leg, Call It Down by the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, which is good in past, but I don't think... I don't know, man. That Yeah, Yeah, Yeah album was a little bit underwhelming. So I'm going to go for Big Thief, best alternative album. They probably won't win, but I'll go for Big Thief. Best R&B performance. You got Virgo's Groove, Beyonce, Here With Me, Mary J. Blige, Hers and Hers, Mooney Long, Over Lucky Day. Yeah, let's go for uh, no, let's go for Jasmine Sullivan. She deserves that, man. Hurt me so good. I'd love if Jasmine Sullivan got a flipping Grammy. Best R&B performance. We don't care about that. Best R&B song. Cuff It. Good blood. How many nominations has Beyonce got? She's everywhere on this, isn't it? God damn. Best progressive R&B album. Operation Funk, Corey Henry, Gemini Rights by Steve Lacey, Drones, Terrence Markin. <sighs> Best R&B progressive album. Let's go for Steve Lacey, Gemini Rights. Let's do that. Best R&B album. It's, it's, it's a criminal that Summer Walker's not on this. It's absolutely criminal. They've got Mary J. Blige, Chris Brown. Oh, Chris Brown's been nominated. Interesting. A deluxe as well. Okay. Um, Robert Glassbine. <laughs> come on man lucky day is good pj morton whatever um yeah let's give it to lucky day for me i'm just giving it to people that don't usually get grammys i've never had one just because i think that will go a longer way than everything else in my opinion uh best rap performance god did you know that's definitely payola how the hell did that get best rap performance pushing p gun and young fuck it definitely gonna not go not gonna win but i give it to them that'd be a great thing to to find out why you're in prison to be fair keep your mood up and whatnot and the rest best rap album is insane i like jack harlow like kanye west said about lady gaga being the creative director of kodak i like jack harlow he's got some great songs but what does he know about having the best rap album that's insane that he's got a nomination for the best rap album for an album that was widely panned as not a good album and not because it was it, it wasn't good because it just wasn't good right it was like there were some good moments here and there i thought i'm a, I'm a big believer that i'm still going record and say he has one of the better flows in hip-hop i like how he sounds sonically on a record it just his tone sounds good and i have a lot you know i put a lot of credence into that stuff but when it comes to a, an album from front to back it was incredibly forgetful and very repetitive in my opinion so to have that as rap album of the year is ridiculous because he can do much better and that album will probably not get nominated you know what i mean that's the irony of this whole thing uh, mr morale the big step is by kendrick lamar obvious you know inclusion there um but for me if i was going for anybody it'd obviously be my guy future i never liked you or it would have to be um it's almost dry by pusha t that would be my first two in that regard but it has stirred up a bit of controversy with people everyone's getting their knickers in a twist to be honest but for me i feel like the inclusion of flipping bad bunny as best record of the year with it being an entirely a record full of flipping spanish songs essentially a, a reggaeton flipping you know special a reggaeton banger it's pretty amazing and just goes to show how powerful and amazing that guy is for me he's the spanish flipping or sorry he's the puerto rican elton john maybe even bigger than that in terms of his range his ability to make whatever and get on certain bops like it's incredible the moment he the moment he learns english or the moment he starts to sing in english and goes down that route he's gonna kill i don't think he will because he's clearly somebody that cares a lot about his roots and wants to stay true but if he does decide to ever go the english route he's gonna be murdering people i swear to god he is he really is 